when we make our measurements based on the fact that most of the world is measuring in the metric system and the United States is still primarily using the English system we have to be able to communicate with one another uh, in terms of the measurements that we make no matter what the quantity is be it volume or mass or rate or whatever the measured quantity is and so it's necessary for us to be able to convert easily between the two systems of measure uh, the metric system where you've got everything base 10 and your English system where you have a variety of different conversion factors and so to make these conversions we need to use what we know about the conversions within each system and then we've got to have some bridges some crossovers that will allow us to get in between the two systems so we have three primary metric English conversions uh, or bridges, as you may hear me refer to them. In terms of volume, think of a one liter bottle of soda. Uh, now that one liter is a thousand milliliters, and that's pretty close to our first conversion factor. So you, if you can think of that frame of reference, uh, 946 milliliters is the same as one quart. So you buy a quart of milk at the store, all right, and that's 946 milliliters, almost the same as like a liter bottle of, of soda. In terms of distance or length, our conversion factor is 2.54 centimeters for every one inch. So you know you think about the, the length of your the middle of your knuckle. All right, that's about an inch. Uh, if you were to measure that with a metric ruler, it should come out somewhere close to two and a half inches. But the exact conversion is one inch is equivalent to 2.54 centimeters. And finally, for mass, 454 grams would be equivalent to one pound uh, in the English system. Um, sometimes we hear about a kilogram and a pound. Uh, that conversion is usually 2.2 pounds for every one kilogram. Uh, but if you do the math, it comes out the same. So again, the three that we would primarily use here, 946 milliliters for every one quart, 2.54 centimeters for every one inch, and 454 grams for every one pound. Now when we have to apply this, we need to first determine what is the quantity that we are measuring. Is it volume? Is it mass? Is it length? And then we need to determine, okay, where am I at in respect, in respect to the appropriate bridge? How do I get to the bridge? And once you cross the bridge using that, those conversion factors we just talked about, how do I get to my destination? So it's basically a three-step process. Get to the bridge, cross the bridge, get to your final destination. In the first example here, we have 725 milliliters. And the question is, how many pints is that going to be? Well, milliliters is the metric system. So we want to think about our metric conversion um, for volume, because milliliters is volume. And our metric English bridge for volume is 946 milliliters per one quart. So we're already at the bridge. So we need to cross the bridge with that first conversion factor. And so that would get us to units of quarts. Now we're on the English side of the bridge. We need to get the pints. So we need to think, how many pints are in a quart? All right, two pints in a quart. So we set up that conversion factor. And remember with factor label, you set up your conversion factor so that the units you want to get rid of will cancel out. The units that you want to keep will stay behind. And so in this case, we're going to put the one quart on the bottom and the two pints on the top. Remember the conversion factors, the two measurements you have, top and bottom, are equivalent. Anything divided by itself is one. The inverse of one is one. So you can flip those conversion factors however you need to to get the units to cancel. Leaving us with units of pints, we do the math. So 725 times 2 across the top. 946 in the denominator, so we divide those two, and you should come out with an answer with proper sig figs of 1.53 pints. If we look at our second example, we're asked to convert 29.5 inches into meters. Now, inches is a measurement of length, and so we're starting on the English side with the inches, and we need to go to the metric side in meters. So we think of our metric English conversion for length, which was 2.54 centimeters, equivalent to one inch. So we're already at the bridge in inches, so we need to first cross the bridge. So we start out by writing our original value, 29.5 inches, and then we put our conversion factor. We're going to set that bridge up so that the inches are on the bottom, so that they'll cancel, 
2.54 centimeters on top. Now that we're on the metric side of the bridge, we need to convert from centimeters to meters. And if you think about your metric prefixes, meters is a base unit, so that's 10 to the 0 power. Centa is 10 to the minus 2, or 1 one hundredth, so that means that there will be 100 centimeters in every 1 meter. Setting up the, the conversion factors so that the units cancel out, we're going to want the centimeters to be on the bottom, the one meter on top. Now that we're in units that we are asked for, we can just do the math. So 29.5 times the 2.54 centimeters on top divided by uh, the 100. All right, and then with proper sig figs, the only numbers that you consider for the sig figs uh, are the original measurement. Each of these conversion factors is considered to be an exact value, uh, so we don't consider any of those for sig fig purposes. And in this case, your answer would come out to 0.749 meters. If we take our first conversion here, we have a length conversion from 5.00 centimeters to inches. So we're starting in the metric side, and we're going over to the English side. So our conversion factor is for length is 2.54 centimeters equivalent to one inch. So you can see we're currently at the bridge and we just simply need to cross over the bridge. So we would start by running down our original value 5.00 centimeters. You can put that over one if you want to help you keep straight what's in the numerator and denominator. And you're going to multiply that by your conversion factor. We want the 2.54 centimeters to be on the bottom so that the units can cancel. The one inch on top. You see that the centimeters can cancel out. And so now that we have the units that we want, we do the math. So 5 divided by 2.54 is going to give us a raw answer of 1.9685 and it, re it goes on beyond that but we only need three significant figures because of our original measured value one two three um, the conversion factor is considered an exact number therefore we do not consider it for sig fig purposes so we go with the original measurement which had three sig figs so we're going to want to keep this digit this place and this place and we're going to cut our answer off here. So the 8 is going to cause the 6 to round up. And so our final answer would be 1.97 inches. If we take a look at a volume conversion, we've got 355 milliliters, which is a metric unit, and we're converting to fluid ounces, which is an English unit. So we know that our bridge is 946 milliliters for every one quart. So we're currently at the metric bridge, but once we get over to the English side, we're going to need to convert from quarts to fluid ounces. So sometimes it's useful to make yourself a little road map. We're going to start with milliliters, and we're going to cross the bridge, and we're going to go to quarts. All right, once we're in quarts, uh, if you know how many fluid ounces there are in a quart, you can go directly there, or you can break it down into smaller steps. Uh, we could go from quarts to pints, and then pints to fluid ounces. And that's the route we're going to go. If you wanted to break it down pints to cups, and then cups to fluid ounces, you could do that as well. We start out with what we've got here, 355 milliliters. Again, you can put it over one if you want. Now our first conversion factor to get us between milliliters and quarts is our bridge. So we're going to set that up so that the 946 milliliters is on the bottom. One quart is on the top. Next we need to go from quarts to pints. And so there are two pints to every quart. So the one quart will go on the bottom so that the units can cancel, two pints on top. And now we need to go from pints to fluid ounces, and there are 16 fluid ounces in a pint. So again, the one pint will go on the bottom so that the units can factor out. And 16 fluid ounces 
on the top. If we do our canceling, you see that milliliters will factor out, quarts will factor out, pints will factor out, and we're left with fluid ounces, which is what we want for our units. And so now we would multiply all of our numerator values together. So 355 times 2 times 16. Then we do the division, divide by 946. And again, we're going to want three sig figs based on our original measurement. All three of these conversion factors, these values are considered exact values. And there's no uncertainty built into them, therefore we don't consider them for rounding purposes. So when we do this math and round off for three sig figs, you should come up with 12 fluid ounces. So the next time you drink a can of soda, take a look at the volume at the bottom. You'll see it says 12 ounces, but it should also say 355 milliliters. All right, our final conversion is another length conversion, 6 kilometers to miles. And so length conversion, we know that our conversion bridge is 2.54 centimeters, equivalent to 1 inch. And we're starting on the metric side. And we're ending up on the English side. So the first step is we need to get from kilometers to centimeters. Now that can be a pretty big jump if we sketch out our road map. So perhaps we want to go from kilometers to meters first and then from meters to centimeters. Once we're at centimeters then we can cross our bridge and go to inches. And inches to miles is another pretty big jump. So let's go from inches to feet and then from feet to miles. So you can see that we're actually going to have one, two, three, four, five conversions in this problem. And that's that in and of itself is not a problem. You can break these conversions into as many steps or as few steps as you're comfortable with so long as your conversion factors are valid. So we'll start off with 6.0 kilometers. Stick it over one times now, kilometers to meters, kilo means a thousand, so there are a thousand meters in one kilometer. Put the one kilometer on the bottom, kilometers so that they can cancel, thousand meters on top. All right, second conversion, meters to centimeters. So there are a hundred centimeters in one meter. You want to put the meter on the bottom for canceling purposes, hundred centimeters on top third conversion factor is our bridge. So we're going to put the 2.54 centimeters on the bottom and the one inch on top. Now that we're across the bridge into the English side, we're going to go from inches to feet. So we need to go 12 inches on the bottom, one foot up top. And finally now we can go to miles there are 5,280 feet in a mile. We're going to put that number on the bottom so that the feet units can cancel out. And now we're in the units that we want. So if we factor out our units, kilometers, meters, centimeters, inches, feet, you see that we're left with units of miles, which is exactly what we want. And so now what we need to do, and we need to be careful with the math here, you're going to multiply all your numerators together, and then you're going to multiply all your denominators together. And you can either do that all at once in the calculator, just use parentheses, or you can do it separately, but then do your division. Okay, remember your order of operations. Do all multiplication first, then your division. Based on our original value, we've only got two sig figs to work with, so your final answer should round off to 3.7 miles.